Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our second problem in the series of videos about the angular momentum. And what we're trying to do here is solve for the angular velocity of the disk. Hmm, why do we do that? Well, it turns out we have three objects. We have a small object, m, traveling at velocity v along the y-axis. We have a bigger object with mass 2m, traveling with velocity 3v along the x-axis. And we have a solid disk with mass 3m that is rotating in one direction or the other. We're supposed to find the angular velocity of the disk such that if we add the three angular momentums, the one for the small mass, the one for the big mass, and the one for the solid disk, if we add it together, we get zero. In other words, we sum the three angular moments, momentums together and we should get zero. So we need to find the angular velocity of the disk to make that happen. Hmm, how do we do that? Well, essentially what we need here is we need that the sum of all the angular momentums equals zero, which means that L1 plus L2 plus L of the disk equal zero. So how do we find the angular momentums of each of the objects? Well, to make it easier, let's go ahead and call this distance right here. Maybe I should use a different color. Let's call this, well, this, we'll start with this distance right here. Let's call it D1. And this distance right here, let's call it D2. And then, of course, the, the, the solid disk is simply rotating about this point right there. So how do we find distance 1 and distance 2? Now, if the, since we have an equilateral triangle inside the circle, or inside the disk right here, notice that the three objects are not touching, so there's no friction or anything like that. Um, we can then see that there's an equilateral triangle with the sides equal to A. You can then see that the distance D1 is equal to A divided by 2 because it's half the length of the base. So we can start by saying that D1 is equal to A divided by 2. How about D2? Well, if we draw a triangle, if we draw a triangle like this, we take half the equilateral triangle, like so, And we have the 2m mass over there, 2m mass over there. And notice that here is the point of rotation called O. If we call this whole distance here h, then we know that the center mass of this triangle, which is going to be where the point of rotation is, must be one-third of an h. Also, we know that this side is A, and we know that this angle must be a 60-degree angle. Now we can use a little bit of trigonometry. We can say that h, the opposite side, is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of 60 degrees. And the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So this can be written as a times the square root of 3 over 2. And now 1 third h would then be, so then we can see here that this distance from there to there, so d2, which is equal to h divided by 3, which is equal to 1 third of this, so it would be the square root of 3 over 6 times a. So now we have d1, a over 2, d2, which is the square root of 3 over 6 times a, and now we're able to find the total angular momentum. So L1. L1 is, the mass is traveling this direction, which gives us a clockwise direction on the rotation, which means that it's a negative angular momentum. So L1 is going to be minus M1 V1 D1 because we know that the angular momentum of an object traveling a straight line relative to a position of rotation right here, which in this case is D1, can be written as MVD or in this case M1 V1 D1, negative because it's in a clockwise direction. The other mass here is in a counterclockwise direction. That's going to be plus m2 v2 d2 and then we have to add the angular momentum of the disk and that's going to be plus i times omega of course we don't know yet what the direction of omega is and that's what we're trying to find omega is what we're looking for and i of course is going to be the moment of inertia of the disk which means that i omega is equal to when we move this across a positive m1 v1 d1 minus 
an M2, V2, D2. And now we can plug in all the things that these are. The moment of inertia of a solid disk is going to be one half. The mass, now the mass in this case is 3m, and the radius of the disk, of course, is r, so that's going to be r squared. But we don't want to express that in terms of r, we want to express that in terms of a. So how do we find a? Well, notice that r is going to be this portion right here. r is going to be 2 thirds h. So r can be written as 2 thirds h, and h is equal to, where am I with my h? h is equal to a times the square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be r is equal to, let's put a line in between here, 2 thirds h, and h is equal to a times the square root of 3 over 2. So that's 2 thirds times the square root of 3 over 2 times a. Now the 2's cancel out. And the square root of 3 over 3 is simply equal to 1 over the square root of the 3 times a. So r can be written in terms of 1 over the square root of 3 times a. And I'll go in here, and this is equal to the mass m1, which is simply m, v1, which is simply v, and d1, d1, which is a over 2, minus m2, which is 2m, v2, which is 3v, and d2, which we said was the square root of 3 over 6 times a. So now we have this, i omega equals this. Oh, I'm missing something, am I not? I'm missing something. I forgot my omega. So let's put an equal sign there. And I can't find, forget my omega because that's what I'm actually looking for. All right. So, um, well, to make things a little bit easier, I have an m in this term, an m in this term, an m in that term, so all the m's cancel out. That makes things just a little bit easier. All right, let's simplify things now. We're going to write this as 3 over 2, r squared, and r is 1 over the square root of 3 times a, that would be a squared divided by 3 times omega is equal to, here we end up with 1 half v times a minus, that would be 6, 6 v times the square root of 3 times a divided by 6. And of course you can see that the 6 counts out to 6, and we can, count, we can factor out a v and an a. And here we can cross out the 3's, so we end up with a squared divided by 2 times omega is equal to, here we end up with, um, if I factor out a v and an a, so I have a v and an a, and I have right here a one-half minus the square root of 3. All right, continuing on. We have an a here and an a squared here, so that cancels out. Let me use a different color. So this a cancels out with this a, and then I have a 2 here. I'm going to cross multiply a 2, so I end up with omega is equal to v over a when the a comes down here and 2 times this gives me a 1 minus 2 times the square root of 3. And so here is my omega. My omega is equal to v over a times 1 minus 2 times the square root of 3. So notice that the disk will have to turn in a clockwise direction because this will have the largest moment of inertia compared to this. This is a positive moment of inertia. This is a negative, or I should say, this is a positive angle of momentum. This is a negative angle of momentum. So we need the disk to rotate in a clockwise direction or with a, a clockwise angular velocity. And therefore, you can see that 1 minus 2 times the square root of 3 is a negative quantity, so we can see that this is indeed traveling in a clockwise direction with a value of omega equal to v over a times the quantity 1 minus 2 times the square root of 3. And that is the angular velocity the disk needs so that when we add up all the angular momentums of the three objects, m, the 2m, and the disk together, we get a zero angular momentum. And that is how it's done.